Yeah, come on. Thank you, Isaac. My name is Michelle Carter, and I'm living in Costa Mesa, California, in Orange County. So I have three boys, Isaiah, he's 12, Isaac is 10, and Roman is four. Taking care of three boys by myself is very tough. Every day is an obstacle, it's emotional battle, every day changes. My name is Lonetta Grant. I'm from Washington, D.C. I have two kids. I have a boy and a girl. Isaiah is the oldest. He's 11 and Taylor is 9. Being a single mom is really, really hard. Right now, I do work at one of my kids' school, which is my daughter's school. I am a reading intervention specialist teacher, and I also coach the dance team. But it's still hard because it's like I'm doing it by myself and making ends meet. It's hard, it's tough days when you don't have everything to provide for them and you know they could have so much more. That's what the tough part is, is that you just want to have more for them. And everything is just limited when you're doing everything by yourself. You go to work and put a smile on your face and say, hey, you know, I'm going to try to conquer the world. But then when you come back home and you realize, like, I don't have any food, you know, and you don't want to let people know. Right now we live in a small apartment. I kind of came to this, this situation because I had lost my job, a full-time job, and I kind of got out of luck. I didn't have any food, um, had any food. My cabinets are bare. So I know it's other families that go through this, you know, and not really talking about it. For me as a kid, growing up was really hard. Um, my father was often on drugs. My mother was a hard, hard worker and just worked and provided for us. Then finally he left and then we went to men that are just like him. So it's been kind of tough, but I've kind of made the changes in my own life with my own kids to separate so that my boys don't go on with that same mentality of that's the way it's, life is supposed to be because it's not. I so. want to be a Shh. owner of an animal shelter that sells animals to people, so it could be a good and a service. I want to be a basketball player. An NBA, also a basketball player? Yeah. How about me? What do you want to be when you get older? Uh, play football. Yeah. It's the biggest um, decision that I've had to make. Leaving, like their father, we were going to go to a shelter home. I didn't have nowhere else to go. Every friend, every family member shut their doors down. And what was hurtful to me is because I'm not um, a bad person. I'm not a drug addict. I'm just a mother that needs to go to work tomorrow and that has three kids. We left and came here with not a spoon, not a plate, not a can of food. It was like two weeks before I could get to work and get a paycheck. So it was a really rough two weeks, even then, Bills were due, rent was due already, so it was all going back out and it would be another two weeks of hanging in there. And then um, I applied for food stamps and you have to wait for that too. So it was just really like struggling, struggling, struggling. And I've never had to struggle like that. Wah. 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 Oh, I forgot. <laughs> an individual like myself who works, who go to work, do what they need to do, my check is not enough. We did that 
I get food stamps. It don't really last me. I normally kind of don't eat dinner. I juice because I'm like, it's too expensive for me to eat, eat. And that's normally every day. A lot of times the kids at school may not eat the lunch. And one of the, the lunch ladies, you know, I juice a lot. So a lot of the kids tend to throw, you know, the, the, the fruits away. So she'll save me bags full of them and I'll just bring them home. So I know I got that bag of food. Now today they had chicken nuggets and fries. They were able to eat and I just juiced me up something and say, okay, it's probably cheaper than me trying to buy more food for me and then it's not enough for them. Hunger definitely exists. We see it all every day. I try the best I can and I work and there are times that I have no money to have for food. It may be a day or two, maybe a week before I get paid again. So the food that we have in the beginning of the month has to stretch. When I first get paid, it's, you know, the bills get paid right away and then we have a little bit left over. About $150, $200 is left after the end of the month to provide for food. So it, it is definitely a true blessing to have the resources out there for the boys. They really help on a day-to-day -day basis for the boys to eat lunch and breakfast at school. I mean, that's a tremendous help itself because I can only provide for dinner foods at the end of the day. It's hard to accept things that are given to me, um, but um, just knowing that you have, that you could provide and have food and not be hungry is just, you could sleep at night. Hunger can really impact their future because it's hard to it's hard to be educated and, and hungry at the same time. You cannot sit there and when the teacher is trying to teach or you trying to learn, you're thinking about your next meal. So I know like if you don't eat and you're hungry, your brain is not is not even working, it's not activated. It makes a big deal when they get their school breakfast. It makes a big deal with the school lunch. Well, I want to save my food most of the times because usually I don't have snack at school because we have to bring snack from home to school. And so I save my lunch, some, save part of my lunch and eat it at, at snack. This is how my kids don't stop. This is how my kids can become better learners because they can eat. You take that away, I don't know. I would do anything in this world to not let them um, be hungry. And I just want the boys, most of all the boys, to know and appreciate what they have because um, we can't, we've became a, came a long, long way. I see myself helping other women and families to reach out there to all the resources that are available because those resources helped me so much when I had nothing and nobody to turn to. In this journey that I have been on since the day I got let go from the police department has been nothing but help. When the hand is reached out to you, you take the other hand and reach it out to somebody else. So it's always you're holding hands. Somebody's on your right and somebody's on your left. So you just gotta do it.